Hi guys, uh, today we're going to show you how to change a tire. Um, first off, there are a few things you have to be aware of. Uh, one, you have to be in a safe place to be able to do this. If you're on the side of the road or something and with cars whizzing by, it's maybe not where you want to be. Um, this, the second is, honestly, I'd, I'd take it to a professional have it done. And one of the reasons why I say that is because tightening the wheels down, on the old cars you used to be able to really reef it down, you know, and, and tighten those lug nuts as, as tight as you want, it didn't matter. But today, the materials on the car are lighter and lighter. And they, they do that for, you know, handling reasons and for fuel economy. But because they're so light, if you over tighten the lug nuts, there is a danger that you could warp the disc behind it. So now, if we are stuck on the side of the road and we have to change the tire, here's what we're going to do. On most cars, um, there will be some type of instruction manual. It's, it, it's very generic and uh, please refer to it in case there's any discrepancies between what I'm telling you and what it says on there. Now, if you look inside the trunk, you can see the spare tire as well as the jack we're going to be using and a handy dandy tool that comes in the kit. Now, surprisingly enough, one of the most complex parts of this job is actually putting everything back together when you're done. There might be a, a couple of days between the time you take it out and put it back in. So if you do have a cell phone, I suggest you take a snapshot of it. It'll make your life far easier. The tire we're gonna be putting on is a temporary spare. If you're lucky enough to have a full-size spare, you won't have to worry about what I'm gonna be telling you next. Um, if you take the time to read the sidewall of the tire, they tell you the inflation pressure. This one here is supposed to be inflated to 60 PSI, which is actually quite a bit higher than a standard tire. The other thing they'll probably tell you is it's for temporary use only, and they may even give you a speed rating on the tire, how fast you should not go above. Typically, it's around 70 kilometers an hour. If you do surpass 70, um, is the wheel gonna fly apart? No, it's not, but you are gonna lose stability. This is a tool that comes in the tire kit. Um, actually, what it is, it's, it's a little bit of a pry bar on one end and a ratchet handle on the other, and then your socket's built into it. So when you put it away, it's nice and compact. When you're ready to use it, you just pull it out and you're ready to go. What I'm doing is I'm straightening this out just to make it a little bit faster to, to lower this. I'm lowering the jack just so it'll fit underneath the car. Um, the tire is flat, so we, we do have to bring it quite low. Now, before I go ahead and raise the jack, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna loosen these lug nuts, just about a turn, a turn and a half. I'm, I'm not trying to take the wheel off the car yet. I'm just doing that because sometimes these things have been on there for a long time and uh, they can be pretty tough to get off. When the wheel's up in the air, we have nothing to force against, at least with the weight of the car on the tire right now, there's no danger of it spinning on me. Now, the placement of the jack is also important. Yeah. On the top here, there's a groove cut into it. Now that groove is made to fit into the frame rail. If you were to look under here with me, you'd see that there's actually a notch cut out in the rock just for this purpose. Now the wheel is free, so I'm gonna stop jacking. I don't wanna jack the car up any higher than necessary. I'm also saving the lug nut on the bottom for last. That's because that lug nut is holding the wheel flat to the hub. Now when I go to put it on, I'm gonna do the exact process I did before, but in reverse. So I'm gonna start with the lower lug nut to keep the wheel flat against the hub. I'm just gonna hold the wheel with my hand and tighten it down a little bit in the crisscross pattern. So as I lower the jack, the weight's gonna go back on the tire and I'll be able to actually get these quite a bit tighter. So now, as you can see, the weight isn't completely off the jack. There's a little bit of weight on the tire, so that's gonna stop the tire for, from turning. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and tighten these down in a crisscross pattern. This is the second step in the tightening process. Once I'm relatively comfortable that the wheel is seated against the hub and there's no slack left, what I'll do is I'll completely lower the jack and then tighten them a third and final time. Tightening the tire down to proper torque specifications is important. Typically on this vehicle, the torque spec is 100 foot-pounds of force. 
If you look at this, the length of my bar isn't that long. They did that on purpose. That way I can't really over tighten it unless I really, really try. I just snug them all equally and we're good to go. Now that we have our spare installed, what we could do is uh, load up all our gear in the trunk and bring it to a professional to have the original tire repaired. And that, my friend, is how you change a tire.